Hello everyone. Welcome to Data Fuse Analytics. Today we are going to study a brief introduction about generative AI. To start with, let's directly jump to the definition of a generative model. Generative modeling is a branch of machine learning that involves training a model to produce new data that is similar to a given data set. Now, let me simplify this with the help of an example. Imagine that you have big collection of lion pictures. Now, these individual pictures are made up of pixels. These pixels are like building blocks of an image. Now, we want a computer to become an expert in understanding how these lion pictures are originally built. So, we use a special computer program that's like a super learner or we call it as generative AI model. It studies all these lion pictures and figures out the important rules for creating a lion picture using these pixels. Here where it gets really fascinating. After this super learner or generative AI model learns all about lions or everything about lions, it becomes creative. It can make brand new lion pictures that nobody has seen ever before. These new pixels which are generated by this generative model look so real even though they weren't in the original lion photo collection or in the training data. Now we want to teach a computer to create realistic lion images, right? To do that, we need to show computer lots of examples or observation of lion that we refer as training data. These examples are like lessons for the computer or the computer or the system will get trained using this data and each image in the training data is called as an observation. Now these observations or these images are made up of many features. Now if we are teaching a computer to make images, the details might be colors of individual pixels in the image. And if it's about making stories or text generation, the details could be or the features could be words or group of letters. Now the trickier part is making this computer creative or probabilistic. Now you don't want the same image to generate every time, right? you want it to come up with different and interesting versions of an image. So you need to add a bit of randomness to its thinking while prediction. So here is the goal. You want the computer to learn the rules of creating this thing so well that it can make new versions that look like they belong to the original samples. This is a very important statement. I'll repeat this statement. You want the computer to learn the rules of creating this thing so well that it can make new versions that look like they belong to the original examples or original training data. It's like teaching a chef to cook so perfectly that they can invent new dishes that fit right within their usual menu. So in the end, it's all about getting the computer to understand and imitate what you have shown to it and then letting it use a bit of a randomness to come up with fresh unique creations that fit the same style. Now to really understand what generative modeling or generative AI tries to do in the back end and why does it really matters, it helps to look at alongside its counterpart G discriminative modeling. Now let's understand discriminative modeling with the help of this example. Now suppose we have two fruits namely apple and oranges. With enough data we can train a discriminative model to predict whether an unknown fruit is an apple or an orange. Our model could learn shape, size, color and other features of fruit or this training data and would output random prediction with a particular confidence. So here in this image, uh, it predicted that the input image is an apple with 0.95% of confidence. Now one point to highlight here is labeling every image in the training data. We can see here zeros and ones. So here zero stands for apple and one stands for orange. On the other hand, generative modeling doesn't require the dataset to be labeled because it concerns itself with generating entirely new images rather than trying to predict a label of an image. So hope I am clear with distinguishing between generative versus discriminative modeling. Now let's formally define discriminative modeling as well as generative modeling. So discriminative modeling estimates the probability of y given x. That is, discriminative modeling aims to model the probability of a label y given some observation x. Now let's look into the definition of generative modeling. Now this generative model estimates probability of x, only probability of x. Now let's see. This generative modeling aims to model the probability of observing an observation x. Sampling from this distribution allows us to generate new observations. And that's why random sampling is important. 
Now we have got to know the definition of generative modeling. Also, we have distinguished between generative and discriminative modeling. Let's see the rise of generative modeling. Over the past decade, we have seen exciting progress in the field of computer vision thanks to new uses of machine learning in creative tasks like making pictures. To illustrate this, this particular diagram that you are seeing on the screen right now, it marks the impressive improvements in creating realistic faces from 2014 until now. So we can see that in 2014, uh, the generated image is pretty blur and then the advancements can be seen there till 2022. You can't actually predict whether this is generated by an AI system or it is an actual image. Now let's play a fun generative AI game. Now let's call this distribution as P data. So the dis distribution that we are seeing on the screen in this figure, let's call it as P data. Now the problem is to choose a different and new point that is x1 comma x2 that looks like it has been generated by the same rule as that of this figure. Now you can pause this video for a few seconds and try to solve this problem. So where did you choose your new point? You might have observed this particular figure and tried to construct a mental model of that figure. Let's call this model as P model. Your mentally constructed P model is an estimate of the input data distribution that is P data. Now did you imagine your P model as this figure? This P model might be a simple rectangular box which I colored in this orange color where points may be found. Now to generate a new data, simply choose any random point inside this colored rectangular box. In formal terms, it is called as sampling from distribution model or P model. So I hope this simple experiment demonstrated generative AI modeling. So in this case, I have picked up this point, which is in this orange colored box. To end this video, I would like to highlight few generative modeling framework and terminologies. The first is data set which contains x number of observations. The second is assumption. All observations are generated from some distribution that is p data. Now the aim of the generative model is to generate p model which mix the input p data. So what do we expect exactly from this p model or this learned p model? The first expectation is accuracy. Observation which is generated from p model should look like it has been drawn from the input p data. The second expectation is generation. New observation should be easily sampled from p model. It should not be tough to sample. The third expectation is representation. That is the low level features represented of the data should be easily understandable by the p model. So that's it guys for this introduction of generative AI video. Stay tuned for more videos on the generative AI course. If you have watched this video till now, do like this video and subscribe to this channel. Your subscription supports me a lot. Thank you guys.